Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. My sweetie, that's where. What sweetie? Miss Drysdale's pretty new maid, Linda Curry. She is crazy mad in love with me. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, well, she is. And when we come back to Spark and Spoon in the parlor, I'd appreciate it if you and Arnie were missing. You couldn't get her in the parlor with a team of mules. Is that so? Well, it just so happens it was her idea. To sit in the parlor with you? <laughs> that's right. She says that I have got something that none of her other fellas has got. He's got color television. <laughs> and I don't want to miss that game tonight. The Rams are playing the Packers. But how can you stand Jethro for a whole evening? I don't even know Jethro's in the same room. Billy Munson's starting at quarterback. Oh, is he dreamy? Nah, you can keep those fancy damn quarterbacks. Give me those linemen. Pow, boom, boom, boom. Hey, how about me coming along? I don't know. Jethro thinks this is a regular date. It might be... Wait a minute. Mr. Drysdale's gonna be out tonight. Can't you watch it here? Oh, I could if old tight fingers would break down and buy a new set. What's the matter? Doesn't the old one work? Yeah, it works all right, but let's face it. Football just isn't football on a three-inch screen. <laughs> Especially those round ones. <laughs> There's my date. Listen, now, maybe I could drop over a little later, huh? Well, okay. The television's in what they call the parlor. Honey, I don't care if it's in what they call the closet. I'll be there. <laughs> Nothing like a fire to make a court and parlor cozy and romantic. That's right. Of course, your popcorn and fudge helps a lot, too. And I made a nice big pitcher of sour lemonade. That ought to get them puckered up. <laughs> By the way, who's this fella coming to court, Ellie? Well, Ellie ain't using the parlor tonight, Granny. It's Jethro. Jethro? Yeah, he's bringing his sweetie over. Well, why don't they sit in her parlor? Well, probably because she ain't got one. She's Miss Drysdale's new maid. I'll take these back to the kitchen. When there's riddles around, Jethro will forget all about the girl. Uh, not this girl, Granny. I hear tell she's mighty pretty, and Jethro is head over heels, falling down, glassy-eyed, in love with her. Heaven help us. When that boy's around a pretty girl, he plumb loses what little sense he's got. Does seem to rattle him a mite. Put that boy next to a girl, and he couldn't pour sand out of his boot if the directions were wrote on the heel. True, but then as he gets bigger, he'll get smarter. Of course, it does seem the one is happening a lot quicker than the other. <laughs> Let's not waste time out here, Jeff. Bro, lead me to that parlor. Hot dog! <laughs> Excuse us. We'd like to be alone. <laughs> Forgot my girl. See what I mean? He just ain't to be believed. Easy now, easy. Don't drag. <laughs> well, now, did you see that? I just can't figure it out. Maybe Jethro's smarter than he seems. <laughs> well, he'd pretty near have to be. <laughs> Let's sit here, shall we? Okay. <laughs> oh, would you dim the lights first? Yes, ma'am. Then hurry, Jethro. I will, I will. It's almost time for the game. Well, what game is that? Post office or spin the bottle? <laughs> Rams and Packers. I don't know much about that one, but if it's got kissing in it, 
I'll learn it. <laughs> it's football, Jethro. You, you want to play football? <laughs> oh, no, I just want to watch. Well, gee whiz, I'd rather we played something together. <laughs> football game is on television. Now, we can sit here and watch it. Watch television? Yes. Not me. I want to have some fun. Now, Jethro. And you ain't going to stop me. I'll scream. Go ahead. I'm eating this fudge. Jed, that girl has been alone in the parlor with Jethro for put near an hour. Maybe I better go see if she needs some help. Now, Granny, Jethro's a proper boy. It ain't that. It's to help her stay awake. <laughs> Being alone with Jethro is about as exciting as watching ice melt. Well, now, uh, maybe his getting smarter has caught up with his getting bigger. Excuse me, could I please have a glass of water? You bet. We can get a pitcher right here in the icebox. What's the matter, honey? Did you fall asleep? Fall asleep? This is the most thrilling and exciting evening I've ever had. It is? Yes, and it's only half over. <laughs> Would you like to come in and watch? Well, uh, um, uh, I don't, uh, I don't hardly, uh, I don't believe so, ma'am. Do you know the score? I think I do. <laughs> yeah. Am I in time for the second half? You sure are, Marie. <laughs> Say, you don't mind if she joins us, do you? Well, uh, no, if it's all right with Jethro. Oh, he's being such a sweetheart. Come on, Murray. I invited a couple of friends. Come on, girls. There's going to be four of you. Oh, it's all right. There are two sofas. Come on, Marie. <laughs> You gotta admit, that boy has made progress. Yeah. Have you ever had that long talk with him? Well, it seems I started a couple of times, but I ain't sure I ever finished. Well, don't. <laughs> I'm going to drown myself. I'm going to throw all this stuff into the cement pond and sink clean to the bottom. <laughs> hey, Linda, would you look over here, please? I'm fixing to do myself in. No, Jethro, don't do it. I'm sorry, Ellie. It's too late to stop me. But you'll get all these tools and stuff rusty. <laughs> well, you women are all alike. You don't care nothing about a fella having a busted heart. Hand me that paper over yonder. I'm going to cut you out of my will. Would you leave me? My four-bladed pocket knife. Hey! <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hey, come back here. Doggone women, anyhow. Hey, Linda, are you gonna watch me or ain't you? I bet all right, boys. Ready want you to come in and eat now. What in the blue blazes? <laughs> Done at my last meal, Uncle Jed. I'm just getting ready to push all this stuff into the cement pond. What fair? I aim to break Linda's heart like she broke mine. This stuff belong to her? <laughs> no, sir, it belongs to you and Granny. Well, then I don't believe I'd be shoving it in the pond. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm going to that big court and parlor in the sky. <laughs> you get this stuff rusty, and you're going to that little woodshed out back. <laughs> Besides, with these ropes tied on, you're going to get pulled in yourself. That's the whole idea. I got nothing to live for. You had four women fighting to get in the parlor with you last night, and you got nothing to live for? <laughs> All they wanted to do was watch the football game on television. Linda, too? She was the worst of all. She acted like I wasn't even there. Well, she'll change her tune when I drown myself. Yes. Boy, I can hardly wait. She'll come tearing through that hedge, wailing and bellering, throw herself on my lifeless body, smother me with kisses, beg me to love her. Boy, am I gonna enjoy that. <laughs> Here I go, Linda! Yes, Ron. Yeah, Uncle Jed, what? How are you going to enjoy anything when you're drowned? <laughs> I pretty near made a mistake, didn't I? <laughs> Doggone it, Uncle Jed, what am I going to do? 
I'm crazy mad in love with Linda, and all she cares about is football players. Well, and be one. You can't just haul off and be a football player. You got to have a fancy padded uniform. And haul off and get one. <laughs> you got to belong to a team and have somebody to play with. Well, Granny and Ellie and me will play with you if you learn us how. <laughs> well, I don't know a whole heap about it myself. I'll tell you what, Jethro. You get the uniforms, and I'll call Mr. Drysdale. Between him and Miss Jane, they know just about everything. You reckon that'll get Linda to like me? Well, I'd say it's got a better chance than sitting on the bottom of the pond hitched up to a half a ton of scrap iron. <laughs> brought about the club its sudden interest in football. Who cares? It's a wonderful game and something they can't get back in the hills. Now, we've got to turn them into real fans. These are excellent books on the subject. Forget it. They've got to have someone who's played the game to explain football. I didn't realize. Where did you play? Michigan, Minnesota. Really? Yep. Yeah. There was a vacant lot in the corner of Michigan and Minnesota. <laughs> Come in. Nice to see you. I did ask you to come over. Oh, our pleasure. You know, I'm delighted to hear that you're interested in football. Yes, it's a wonderful sport. Well, Jethro's the one that's all stoked up a word, but the rest of us would be obliged if you'd learn us too. Oh, no trick at all. Granny's out in the kitchen. Now, let's get out there with the old pigskin. Mr. Drydale, I wouldn't call her that to her face. <laughs> Granny, Ellie Mae. Mr. Drysdale is going to learn us how to play football. Do you play, Mr. Drysdale? Well, not anymore, but at one time I was known as the Iron Man of Michigan. And Minnesota. <laughs> yes. Whenever we were in trouble, the quarterback would call my number. And you'd tell him what to do on the phone, huh? <laughs> no. I was in the game. He'd call on me to take a handoff. Take your hand off what? Uh, I'll try to explain. Now, Suppose Miss Hathaway is the quarterback. Now, I am the running halfback. Now, slap the old pigskin right in the breadbasket. Ah! <laughs> that was Andy. What do you do now? Pick up the ball? <laughs> You're sacroiliac again? Yes. Get me home quick before Granny tries to talk to me. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the end of the lesson. Well, let's not stand here. You want to learn my doing. Drysdale? No, I walked this way to keep the rain out of my face. Uh, Mr. Drysdale. What? What? Do you like ice hockey? I love it, but I don't feel like playing right now. But, sir. What? Well, there's a marvelous hockey game on television tonight. Color television. So? So I thought maybe you'd like to have a color set. They're dirt cheap right now. They make them in a three-inch screen? <laughs> no, but you can get a 21-inch for $400. 400 Oh! <laughs> that, that fixed my back. Save me a doctor bill. How about that color set? Do you really want one? Yes. Okay. You go right ahead and order one. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Ten dollars a week. Oh. <laughs> Twenty-seven. Sixty-three. Forty-nine. Twenty-seven. Twenty-three. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Forty-two. Jethro! Yeah, get what? You have to do all that ciphering? I ain't ciphering. I'm calling signals. When I'm done, you hand me the ball. Here, you're done. You don't hand it to me like that. You pass it to me, twixt your legs, like I showed you. Oh, I believe I'll skip that. Uh, this get-up is kind of binding on me as it is. Every time I lean over, my hat falls off. <laughs> Not your hat, Uncle Jed. It's your helmet. Now, come on, let's try it again. Well, here comes the rest of the team. Let's wait for them. <laughs> Linda's probably watching. If I let go of these pants, the whole neighborhood will be watching. <laughs> Speaking of Linda, you honor she comes through the head. Hot dog. Now I can show her some fancy running and catching. Uncle Jed, you send her the ball to Granny. Granny, you give it to Ellie. Ellie, you throw it to me when I get down there near Linda. 
37.52. Here, Granny. <laughs> 23, skidoo. Take it, Ellie. Hey, Linda, watch you catch the ball. Find it, Ellie! Watch out, boy, you're headed for the wall! Huh? Well, yeah, I think so. Oh, good. Jethro, can I come over and see you tonight? Oh, you ain't gonna watch football on television, are you? No. No, word of honor. Okay, then you can come. Oh, thank you. <laughs> By golly, the boy was right. These football uniforms sure get the women. Wait, Jed. Why don't you take a little walk around the neighborhood in yarn? Well, I'll be making fudge and popcorn anyway. <laughs> Jethro went to pick up that girl wearing his full football get-up. Yeah, I spoke to him about that, but it seems that the girl is uncommon fond of it, so he ain't taking no chances. What's he gonna do, wear it till he gets married? <laughs> of course not. After tonight, the girl gets to know Jethro, learns all his qualities, find out what he's really like, he... he might have to keep it on a spell at that. <laughs> Here we are again. Yes. Like me in my uniform, huh? Oh, yes, Jethro. You're... Uh, you're really something. <laughs> Thank you. Before we go in the house, want to take a stroll out there on the front lawn? What have you got in mind? Well, the moon is nice and bright. You can throw me some passes. <laughs> oh, well, that's real tempting, Jethro, but uh, let's go right into the parlor. Well, I can't show you much fancy football catching in there. Jethro, like I told you before, I'm not interested in football tonight. Oh! I'm awful sorry. But I just won't need this anyhow. No, no. Not tonight. Yeah! <laughs> Got your girl again, Jethro? No, sir, Uncle Jet. I'm gonna show Linda my fancy footwork. Hey, Linda, watch this. 26, 18, 32, ha! says. He's got to start cutting that girl over to her house. He is acting like he's a few pickles shy of a barrel. You reckon that that football hat could be pressing on his brain? I don't hardly see how. Even that city girl's gonna drop him if he don't get them squirrels out of his attic. I couldn't stop and went through the window. But I didn't hurt myself, though. Isn't he marvelous? Come on, Jethro, let's get into that parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Want to come in the kitchen and have some coffee? No, Granny, I'd best fix that front window. You can't see to put that glass in there tonight. I don't aim to. Till Jethro falls out of love, I'm just going to cover it with wax paper. <laughs> But you ain't fixing to drown yourself again. Yes, I am. I'd appreciate it if you go over next door and make sure Linda's watching. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't leave that stuff to you. Then I ain't telling Linda to what? <laughs> again with this nonsense? It ain't nonsense, Uncle Jed. I aim to end it all. Hey, Linda, will you look over here? <laughs> I thought the girl loved you. Well, that's what I thought, till last night. Turns out she loves hockey players. What in tarnation is a hockey player? It's a fellow that goes slipping and sliding on the ice 
trying to hit a little old round piece of rubber into a net with a curved stick. <laughs> and Linda likes that? Just crazy about it. Boy, have you given any serious thought to finding yourself a new girl? <laughs> no, sir, Uncle Jed. Linda's the only girl I could ever love. A Jethro. And if I can't have her, ain't nobody gonna get her. Jethro. Yes, sir, Uncle Jed, what? How is drowning yourself gonna keep somebody else from getting there? <laughs> Never made another mistake, didn't I? <laughs> I'm real close. Well, doggone it, what am I gonna do? You sure you don't want to try for another girl? No, sir. I don't love often, but I love deep. Uh -huh. Well, if you're bound and determined it's got to be Linda, and she's partial to hockey players, I reckon you just about got to start hockeying. <laughs> Suppose switch the Clappers from football to ice hockey. <laughs> Perhaps it was your demonstration of football. <laughs> you know, this puck would just about fit in your mouth. <laughs> oh, hi, folks. Come in. Come in. I hate to keep bothering you this way. Oh, not at all. Hockey's a fine sport. You'll like it. Well, it's for Jethro again. He's got himself a uniform. Now he needs to learn the game. Forget it, Uncle Jeff. <laughs> what do you mean, forget it? You want the girl to love you, don't you? Not if I have to wear this. But she could hug and kiss me like crazy, and I'd never even know it. <laughs> Can't spark in these kind of clothes. <laughs> uh, but what girl is Jethro referring to? Oh, a pretty little thing named Linda, Miss Drysdale's new maid. What's that about my new maid? Jethro is enamored of her. Oh, no, ma'am. He likes her heap. <laughs> it's her that don't care shucks about him. Really? Well, I have a feeling that's going to change. <laughs> and then he said if I'd be nice to Jethro, he'd get a 25-inch color set and throw that antique with a 3-inch screen away. Thank goodness. These things are killing me. Uh, now, wait a minute. I haven't agreed to do it yet. You haven't? Nope. I told him I wanted to think it over. Here, put these on while you're thinking. <laughs> <sighs> I'll do it, I'll do it. Here, Uncle Jed. What's that? This here's a combination suicide note, last one in testament, and shopping list. <laughs> what? Granny wanted me to go to the market, but I got to do myself in while it's still light enough for Linda to see me. Well, come back here. It's no use, Uncle Jed. There's just no pleasing that girl. One night it's a football player, the next night it's a hockey player. Tonight, who knows? Now, wait a minute. There must have been something she liked about both of them. Think for a minute. Wasn't there anything they'd done alike? Well, yeah. They both done what you call commercials. <laughs> well, it's a long shot with a limb in the way, but it beats breathing pond water. <laughs> you sit down right here. I'm going to dim the lights. Are we going to watch television? No, ma'am. Well, what have you got in mind? You'll see. Are you ready? I, I think so. Well, watch this. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> oh, Jethro, I adore you. <laughs> What's he doing? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. <laughs> but it's working. <laughs> there. It was wonderful. I'll do it again. <laughs> Well, 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. Thank <music> you.